Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another Solution Engineer video. Uh, my name is Chris Unwin, and quite rightly, I am a Solution Engineer at Redgate Software. Now, today's video is going to be all about getting up, running, and classified as quickly as possible. How? Well, that's classified information. No, of course, I am just kidding. No, today we are going to be tackling one of the most well-known databases in existence, of course, that being AdventureWorks Production. And we're going to be using Redgate SQL Data Catalog to get there, to get classified. Now, if you're not already familiar with Redgate SQL Data Catalog, uh, go over to the Redgate website where you will find under the Redgate Hub links to some product documentation, some learning articles, and my personal favorite, hey, because it's me, uh, Redgate University as well. And that will take you through everything you need to know about Data Catalog, how we build up taxonomies, how we tag our columns and tables, etc., etc., etc. For now, though, I'm going to assume that you know how SQL Data Catalog works, and we're actually going to try and tackle AdventureWorks as quickly as we possibly can. Now, a very, very quick admission on my part. I'm not proud of it, but I don't know AdventureWorks that well. So hopefully this is going to work in our favor, uh, or Adventure works in our favor. Now, I'm actually going to, before clicking into this database and having a look, we're going to go straight over to our rules tab. Now, I'm going to build out some rules that will allow us to um, do the very first thing that we should do with classification to make this easy. Descope. We've already done our taxonomy. We've agreed on our taxonomy. We have a company agreed upon format for our taxonomy. That'll make sense. But... Now it's time to think, how do we apply that taxonomy and in what stages? And of course, the first stage for me is always de-scope. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call this rule number one. And we're going to say this is the empty tables rule. And we're going to automatically apply. So hopefully you can see. There we go. We've got empty tables, automatically reply. And we're going to say, OK, any... Uh, any columns that we have on my instance in AdventureWorks production that don't already have any tags, so with no tags, that are in empty tables, those are going to be out of scope. So let's go ahead and say, okay, so with no tags and in empty tables, I'm going to go ahead and say, right, information classification public, <clears throat> classification scope, out of scope, unused. And we're going to save that down. There we go. You can see that appearing at the top there. And if we go and verify, we should hopefully see that, there we go, AdventureWorks has started with some classifications there. So here are our empty tables. They've been classified as out of scope, unused. Tremendous. So I'm going to quickly add another rule, and we'll call this rule number two, and automatically apply AdventureWorks production with no tags, and that is a primary key. Now, in my database, I'm going to say, and I believe, I believe this is the case for AdventureWorks, this is my understanding, is that the primary keys on this database are non-sensitive. They are purely IDs. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, that's all fine. And we'll say information classification, public classification scope, out of scope, system specific. Save changes and apply tags. I should probably have given that rule a slightly better name. So uh, primary key, there we go, descope. Save changes, tremendous. Uh, and let's do one more as well. So I'm going to automatically apply the uh, removal of the DMS tables. Now, this is uh, some 
tables for the Redgate data masker that I have had pointed at this particular copy of the production database. So we're going to run this as well. So if it contains DMS, and we could double check that by looking at the filter as well. So we could see here, we've got the uh, DM, there we go. DMS stat, R stats, T stats tables, et cetera. So anything that looks like a data masker specific table, um, which we might have per schema, I'm going to include that and say that that is out of scope, non-sensitive, again, public. Save changes and apply, fantastic. So now you can see that AdventureWorks already has 110 classified columns, which is pretty good, I would say. And we can click in and we can actually have a look at the uh, classification suggestions that we already have here as well. So you can see that it's picked up things like our sales tax rate. Uh, we've got credit card ID. Again, these are more non-sensitive fields. You can see that it's correctly picked up on card number, expiration month, expiration year. Uh, so that's definitely something we should classify. What else we can do? Uh, financial sales, currency rate, date from currency code to currency code, no. Account number, yes, definitely. Credit card approval code, mm, we should be fine. Phone number, city, postal code, email address, password, hash and salt. First name, last name. Email promotion, yeah, why not? Email address, national ID number, birth date, account number, tax amount and username. Yep, and we'll apply those classification suggestions, jump back to AdventureWorks production, and there we go. So now we've got a few columns that have been classified, but let's filter down to just what, what hasn't yet been tagged. So at the moment, with no tags, we're almost halfway there, 358 items. So the next thing that I'm going to do is start looking at some tables, some common tables that we have. So we've got our AdventureWorks build version, our database log. We also have an error log in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's look for any tables called version and any tables with the, with, with the word log in there. Um, we can see what database log, AW, uh, we've got AW build version, and we'll just select all of those and again, de-scope them. Classification scope, out of scope, uh, system, public, apply. There we go. And you'll see they've disappeared because we have with no tags uh, selected. So back to with no tags. Quickly casting our eyes down, we've got some human resources, the person schema, we've got person.person, .person, which is most likely going to be sensitive. <clears throat> so let's have a look for some data types. So data types I'm interested in, perhaps uh, big int, we'll have a look for any bits, we'll have a look for date time and date time two and date. We'll have a look for the, let's have a look, hierarchy ID. We'll have a look for image that might be sensitive. Int, that's an interesting one. Int, arresting one. So let's have a look at that. Uh, money, we'll have a look for small int and small money as well, just in case. Unique identifier, non-sensitive. Uh, we'll go timestamp. That might be interesting. We'll have a look at that one. Uh, let's go with numeric, nchar, decimal char, XML, tiny int. Might need a tiny int and maybe a time as well. Let's have a look at those. So we've selected a number of data types. Uh, you can see that we've got 245 items here. So actually, we can quickly cast our eyes over this and say, right, um, organization level, higher, higher date might be sensitive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to click the employee options here. Yep. And just say that they are sensitive. So we've got three sensitive fields, internal, in scope. So we've got, we, we've got the, um, 
whether or not it's in scope or not, which is cool. They've now, there we go. Uh, should we do vacation hours and sick leave hours? Yeah, let's do those. Information classification, internal, in scope, apply. There we go. They've now disappeared, which is excellent. Uh, so quickly cast our eye over, modified date, end date, yeah, not worried about that. Rate, pay frequency, no, not really sensitive. Modified, nope. Uh, start time, end time, modified date, none of these looking particularly sensitive. Modified date is going to be very non-sensitive. This all seems perfectly reasonable. Nothing in there really that is sensitive. Product ID, review date, no actual cost. Tell you what, that all seems pretty much in order. So I'm going to take all of those on the page. I'm going to say that they are internal, but that they are out of scope, non-sensitive. Apply. Cool. And now we're just left with a few more to do. So transaction dates. So our transaction history table that might well be sensitive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the transaction dates. I'm going to oh, I'm going to quickly deselect the previous hundred we had selected. Uh, take transaction date, transaction date, classify, in scope, information classification, we'll say internal, apply. Wonderful. So now that we've done that, once again, very quick, cast our eye down, start date, end date. Nope, nope, nope. Don't need any of you. Actual costs. It's so much easier than going one by one, selecting top 1,000 from the, uh, selecting top 1,000 from the uh, tables, figuring that out. Uh, now, this is just an order, order date. That's not sensitive. We might need that for some analysis. Credit rating. Oh, hello. Yes, you could definitely be sensitive. We'll say your confidential in scope apply. Brilliant. But apart from that, this all looks fine. Classify. Internal. Out of scope, non-sensitive apply. Excellent. And then just again, very, very quickly. Sales, salesperson, modified dates. No, 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 nothing in there particularly. Brilliant. So we can, again, select all of those, classify, internal, and we'll say that they are out of scope, non-sensitive. Brilliant. And that was pretty straightforward. So now let's see what we have left. Well, we only have 103 items left here. And you can see that immediately you've got things coming through that are probably sensitive. We've got login IDs, marital status, gender salaried flag. Ah, now we've got the data type flag here as well. Let's just select all of those and descope those. Internal flags, out non-sensitive. Don't care about the flags. There we go. So now we're left with XMLs. We're left with NCHARs, NVAR chars. We've got gender dress line here. We've got spatial location, name style, names, demographics, XML. But the thing is, there's only 94 items in here. So it's significantly easier for me to go, OK, well, I can run through a few of these spot any final non-sensitive fields. So we could say uh, card type, for instance, from and to currency code very quickly. Uh, purchase order number, maybe approval code. Yeah, no, we'll say that's non-sensitive. Reason type. So that could be an issue. Country region code. Yeah. Shopping cart ID. Nope. Type again, name, demographics, that could be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, once again, internal, out of scope, non-sensitive. And we have now just 87 items left. And it's fairly straightforward for us to just filter by this. There was a lot of names in there. So what I can do is I can go ahead and type percentage name percentage. 
these all look sensitive, all of them. Um, maybe there might be some item names in there, but let's just adopt best practice. And we'll say that that is confidential in scope. There we go. Clear the name out. Uh, none. And I forgot to apply them, so that would probably help, wouldn't it? If I pick containing name, there we go. Brilliant, that's filtered. We've got login ID here, we've got job title. So again, these all seem in scope to me. Resume, spatial location. So what we'll do is we'll select all of the remaining ones and we'll say information classification, confidential, in scope, apply. Now, what I didn't say was the applicable regulation. What I didn't say was what data type it was. What I didn't say was all of the other pieces of information that might make this information useful. But we don't want to go too micro. We don't want to go too granular too soon. That, of course, can just be a massive time sink. Because now, if we come back to our overview and look at AdventureWorks, we're completely classified in about 15 minutes. But let's look at, let's break this down by classification scope, and you'll see that actually there is a huge amount of, uh, there's a huge amount of data in here that is just non sensitive, and actually only 93 columns on this entire database are sensitive and therefore need our attention. So I can now filter that down by tag and I can say in scope. And now I can go through and add my information types. I can go through and add my relevant uh, regulations. Maybe some of these are more financial and I can filter down further to apply um, my SOX or my PCI DSS tags. Maybe there's some really sensitive personal health information on there, in which case I might be able to add my HIPAA or my GDPR tags. The point is we got classified quickly and now we can break down the information classification, the scope, and understand what is confidential, what's just internal, what's public, etc. And there you have it, AdventureWorks production, or at least 610 columns done uh, in a very short amount of time. If you scale this up, they are definitely economies of scale because you end up in a situation where, yes, this worked well for a 610 column database. What about when we hit 5,000 columns? Well, where I descoped empty tables and we got rid of nine columns, when you're working against 5,000 columns, that same process might not descope nine, it might descope 900 because we have a CRM or ERP system that's sat around and we're only using two of the modules. So the point is, they definitely are quantities, of, definitely are economies of scale here. There are definitely ways of getting classified fast using that bulk classification, using those automatic and manual suggestion rules. And it's very easy to get going with data catalog. So there we have it, getting classified fast and doing so with SQL data catalog. Uh, let us know your favorite approaches to classifying the data on your tables. Let us know if you would take a different approach uh, or if you think uh, anything different to what I've been through in this particular session. For now, though, do make sure to stop by on the Redgate Hub for some additional learning, Redgate University, the documentation page, and of course, reach out if there is anything we can help you out with here at Redgate. For now, though, stick around and we'll see you soon. Thank you.